Today we're going back to Afghanistan, something that US troops might not be saying for much longer. Over the past few weeks, the United States has been in negotiations with the Taliban. And I know what you're thinking, well that's gotta be an exercise in futility. Ok, we hear you, death to America, but how about just crippling America? I mean we shut down the government for over a month and are currently talking about maybe leaving NATO. You have to meet us in the middle here. In reality, these talks are going surprisingly well with gestures of goodwill coming from both sides. Now I'm going to preempt a few comments here by acknowledging at the top, A, the Taliban, not a great group. They definitely get an assist in the 9-11 attacks, which yeah, I'm a New Yorker, nothing funny there. And B, they were definitely created, at least in part, by America. But they seemed so cool at the time, I mean they were fighting the Soviets with John Rambo himself, and even the great James Bond. Although it was Dalton, so I'm not sure that counts. I'll take clips that didn't age well for 300, Alex. What the hell are you up to, Cameron? Selling dope? Not so loud. That's the chief of the Snow Leopard Brotherhood. Who? He's the biggest opium dealer in the Golden Crescent. I've worked for them from time to time. I couldn't care less if the Russians die from my bullets or their opium. Besides, we need the money to buy arms. Ladies and gentlemen, the protagonist? Anyways, today we're going to talk about what has currently been agreed to in these negotiations and what the next level of negotiation might look like. So let's start by looking at what we have right now. Yeah, let's face it, until relatively recently, uh, no one really thought that we would be in a position where we could say that we had a blueprint for some type of peace deal to allow the war to end uh, or the, in Afghanistan and allow the Taliban to stop fighting. Certainly a long road ahead, but absolutely this is a breakthrough at this point. Alright, so let's open this plan up and see what goodies are inside. The main thing we agreed to so far is, interestingly enough, the United States principal concern and the reason we entered this war. Wow, way to really play your hand there, Taliban. The Taliban have agreed to keep their territory from being used as a staging ground for terrorism and have agreed to guarantees and enforcement mechanisms to back up their commitment. Now unfortunately as of this episode being written and after quite a deep dive into quite a shallow rabbit hole, I can confidently report that these guarantees and enforcement strategies have not yet been revealed to the public. Although our negotiators seem happy with them, so neither these agreements are really good or negotiators are angling for a raise. The conversation looks like Taliban sources say their leaders are paving the way for around 14,000 American troops in Afghanistan to leave within 18 months. In return, groups such as Al Qaeda and ISIL will not be allowed to use Afghanistan as a base to target US forces. Now you might be saying to yourself, great, now the only terrorists in Afghanistan are the Taliban. But they slipped under the radar when we were making a list of foreign terrorist groups and haven't been added since. Now that's not to say they aren't terrorists, especially considering their counterparts working in Pakistan definitely made the cut. But they quack like a duck and look like a duck but for now America and the government of Afghanistan are content calling them a goose considering them a terrorist organization for immigration purposes and designating them as a specially designated global terrorist entity. Now this might sound like a mundane difference, but it's critical to understanding the next step in these peace negotiations because America, we don't negotiate with terrorists, only specially designated terrorist international groups. Now if you were American who didn't give a single hoot about the politics in Afghanistan or the ramification of your actions, you could happily skip out of that country right now and be relatively confident that your single goal of eliminating terrorist groups in Afghanistan could be addressed. But there is another surprisingly more difficult matter that we are now trying to solve. Well, I'm sure that uh, Ashraf Ghani is being kept apprised, he's being consulted by what's happening with these talks. But let's face it, I mean, it is quite absurd that uh, you know, you're having this, uh, this effort to try to reach a deal with the Taliban and bring it into the war, and yet the Afghan government has not been included yet. Yeah, we're yet to bring the Afghan government into negotiations to end the war in Afghanistan. 
which unfortunately doesn't do much to disprove the Taliban talking point that Afghanistan's government isn't a puppet of the United States. No, they're totally independent and we can't wait to let them start negotiating once we have a deal. The problem is, when the United States invaded Afghanistan in 2001, we were kind of crashing the whole war party because there was already a civil war that had been raging in the country since around 1978, to which George Bush thought to himself, yeah, we'll get this figured out in a few years. The war was between the Taliban and the Northern Alliance, or as it's now known, the Afghan government, and things were going really well for the Taliban up until 2001, when the United States began fighting on behalf of the Northern Alliance. Back to the modern day and we've done a pretty good job negotiating what we wanted out of the war in Afghanistan, but now we're trying to end the civil war in Afghanistan, which is challenging because as of January, 229 districts were under government control, which is about 56.3% of all districts. There were 59 areas, approximately 14.5% under the control of the Taliban and other factions. The remaining 119 districts are contested controlled by neither the Afghan government nor armed groups. Now this might sound like means for celebration, because hey, the government that we support controls 56.3% of the country. According to my calculations, that's more than half. But it's really a glass half full, half empty situation, because at the same time, after 18 years of combat with full US Army support, the official government of Afghanistan currently doesn't control 43.7% of the country, a number that's not going to start shrinking when the US withdraws troops. The next step for us is simply finding a way to get these two leaders into the same room together, which is proving to not be the easiest task. I mean, I think at this point I'm going to go with the cure from sitcoms and lock them in a room together until they figure something out. In search of peace in Afghanistan, the United States renews its efforts to persuade the Taliban to have direct talks with government leaders. What hopes are they of sitting them at the same table and ending the war? The problem is that the Taliban don't recognize the government of Afghanistan as, well, the government of Afghanistan. I mean, it would be like getting Richard Dawkins to compromise his values for the Pope. I love crab. Oh, God says I can't eat shellfish? But I don't believe in God, so I guess I'm only going to eat crab on Christmas then. On the other hand, the government of Afghanistan is really, really pushing to meet directly, partially because they're feeling left out of negotiations, which you're yet to be let into the negotiations, so I get that. Also partially because if America leaves without an ironclad and enforceable deal, many are comparing the likely outcome to a post-war Vietnam, in which the Taliban rapidly regains control of the country. The next step in the peacekeeping process is twofold. The US hopes the Doha talks will lead to a ceasefire and power sharing agreement that would pave the way for tens of thousands of US and NATO troops to pull out of Afghanistan. So a ceasefire and a power sharing agreement. Now that might sound simple, I mean that's only two things, but when step one is let's stop killing each other and then step two is let's form a government together, it gets a little more complicated. The goal now is to integrate the Taliban government into the official Afghan government, which as you can imagine is controversial. I mean, let's not forget that, while I spent the majority of this episode talking about the Taliban as though it's eh, just another political party, they make the Westboro Baptist Church look like the cast of Queer Eye by comparison. We're talking legit Sharia law here, and have fun picking a national anthem considering this group thinks that listening to music should be illegal. Also watching movies, women going out in public without full burqas, women getting education, yeah women come up a lot in these lists. And that is a particular group that is very unenthusiastic about any compromises with the Taliban. And I know that when it comes to respecting women, nobody has more respect for women than I do, nobody. But some spectators are worried that in a bid to just get the heck out of Afghanistan, well, we'd be willing to let some human rights slide in order to just get a handshake and end this war. So how do you integrate a democracy and a radical Islamist group? 
Well, we've had a few ideas from an interim government where that interim government would be formed by bringing in Taliban leaders and administrative leaders until both sides negotiated a new constitution. But literally everybody hated that idea. More likely is appointing Taliban members to key ministerial positions. Although I'm pretty sure they're going to want more than, alright Taliban, we'll get you guys started in charge of housing and urban development. And um, energy? Other strategies on the table are rewriting parts of the constitution to reflect the more conservative Islamist ideals. And it has even been suggested almost a two state solution be agreed to. With the United States backed Afghan government takes care of the capital and populous cities, while the Taliban controls the vast swaths of villages and land. The problem with this, of course, is a lack of faith that people have in the Taliban not to restart the war as soon as America leaves. Because, well, they were doing really well before America showed up, and all signs show they're in a power position now. So this is where we're at right now. America has gotten what we wanted with enforceable guarantees that Afghanistan won't become a terrorism incubator, although those enforceable guarantees have not been made public yet. Now in this war turducken we find ourselves in, we're now trying to resolve an Afghan civil war that was raging far beyond before we got there. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news, remember to subscribe by clicking on this floating logo to the right of my head. Ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring and remember to give me a thumbs up. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.